So it's really weird talking to a microphone that doesn't really amplify anything. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, we'll pretend. So my name is Zohar Babin, uh, for those of you who haven't really known me till now. Um, I'm leading community and developer relations in Kaltura. Kaltura is an open source online video platform and we'll be talking today about what is online video, how it's being used, uh, what does it mean open source video platform, what is it video platform anyway, and we'll use all that knowledge in a small use case of building a Joomla video website. And that by using a Joomla extension that Kaltura have created and uh, is actually being extended by people from the community already. Um, you can ask the guy from Flexi Content about an extension that they made for that extension. Um, so, first of all, thank you for coming and uh, listening. And um, so I, I already, already know most of you, so <laughs> I know who you are. Um, we'll just follow. So um, when we talk about online video, we're really talking about rich media. We're not talking about only video. So we're talking about animations, we're talking about uh, integration with text and images and, and vector graphics and, um, and really how we're going to take all of that media and um, work it out together and mash it up in such a way that it will provide a, a, like a fluid experience for the users from the upload of the content all the way through the playback of the content and um, how the users are able to do that themselves, not just the admins of the site. So you're not really looking for a, a flow where your producers create the videos for you and then you pay them to uh, continue the producing, uh, the editing part, and after the editing part, you actually need to transcode the videos. Um, so you need someone that really um, knows what to do and how you know what codecs he should work with and um, um, so how do you convert for the iPhone for example <coughs> so we talked about the user experience and it start, really starts from w how the users get the data how the user gets the the media onto your website so if you use Facebook for example um, you have all, the, all three of them well except for the second one but you can actually go on, your, on, on the website, upload video, and upload, um, um, for example, upload images, or use the webcam from the, on, the, on the laptop and record yourself. Um, but how do you do that on your website? I mean, you know how to use YouTube and you know how to use Facebook, but how do you integrate those tools in your website? How do you provide a client with that flow? Um, and we also, um, provide another flow, which is import. So the user already has uh, his channels on YouTube. The user already has his content on Facebook, already has his contact on Flickr, and so on and so on. But you really uh, want to provide the users with a way to import that media, for example, to your website, and then mesh it up together. For example, <coughs> sorry. Uh, mesh it up on your um, on articles, for example. You want to use those videos on and images on, create them into playlist and one remix um, to be viewed on the website. <laughs> and the other part, so we uploaded the media. Um, there are endless number of code, video codecs out there. How do you handle the um, video codec that the camera has recorded and make it playable on your website? So you need to try digest the video. You need to digest those media files. So you get a really large JPEG file. What do you really do with that? You, wanna, you, you only want to present it on the article. So how, how would you do that? You get a, a, like an AVI file. That's not playable anywhere. That's not even playable on the iPhone. Well, anything, anything is <laughs> playable on the iPhone. So, um, 
Digestion means really transcoding and processing of the content. You get a video file, which was like a WMV or an MVI or a move file or whatever, and then you make it available for, um, for the iPhone, for the iPad, and you make it available for uh, streaming via the web. And on the web, there's standards also. So guess what? You need your video to be available on VP8 for HTML5 uh, encoding, which H2, H.264 or FLV for flash playback. And what about moderation? Um, let's say your client is, uh, is a school. It's a K-12 school. So um, the teachers would like to enable their the kids on the, on the class to upload media themselves, the media that they found on the web, and then remix it together into stories. Now, kids are, can be sometimes mean, and they may upload porn, for example. Um, so you need a way to moderate the content before it goes live and everybody else sees it. <coughs> and then, I think the most important part and why we are today here is the integration part. So you are creating an, uh, a website for a client, and that website is run based on Joomla. Now, you don't want your user to be jumping from Joomla to another management console back and forth all the time just to create his own flow, just so the user will be able to um, embed video file on his player, on, on his uh, articles. So integration is the part where you take all of that, all of those services, all of those systems that digest your content, enable moderation, um, all of those parts that really make the, the infrastructure of the video, the infrastructure of streaming media live on, and on demand on the web, and then integrate those seamlessly inside of your CMS, inside of your system. And again, engaging the users. So you want more than just a video player. So because a video player, so let's say your, your website doesn't really care about the content. So you can get the, the, you can get the video on, the, on YouTube, for example. And that's where it ends. It's a video player on your website that you embedded and you can't really change the way it looks. You can't change the, uh, the features on the player and you can't really make something special for your users. For example, they can't really engage with the content. They can't create content themselves. They can only view the content on your website. So we're really looking for something more than just being able to play video on your website. We, we're looking for something that will call the users and tell them, hey, we want to see your content. We, wanna, we want you to be able to participate and be a part of it. Tell us your story. For example, we want to create the Jane Beyond video website. And on the Jane Beyond video website, we don't want only the, <coughs> sorry, we don't only want the videos that were taken by the, by the video guys in Jade Beyond. We also want the images and we also want the videos that you guys took, that the, the attendees of the event have took. That's really valuable because then we can actually create uh, articles and we can, we can create conversations about those media files. Distributing the content. So the last part is where, okay, you have your content and the users also contribute to that content, but you really want to be out there. You do want to use those networks like Facebook or um, YouTube and on uh, iTunes, for example, you want to be able to get your content out there. You want to be able to expose the content, but you also want to be able to track that. You don't, wanna, you, want, you don't want your users to just take them bad code, place it somewhere, and you will never know what happened to it. You really want to know who's viewing it, on what sites, um, how is it being used? How many people are viewing that, same, that specific part of the video, for example? 
So from distributing the content and everything, everything else, you really want to know how to analyze that content, how to analyze the user experience that the users had um, went through while using the tools, while creating remixes together, for example. <coughs> and so after we analyze the content, after we uh, understand what parts of the video have been looked at, for example, we really want to take action. And that's where our video platform comes in, to solve all of those infrastructure sets and then provide you with the set of tools, the set of solutions that will actually enable you to create your own solutions. So what we'll see today, for example, the Joomla extension. The Joomla extension provides the, the very basic level of integrating the tools and the APIs with Joomla. But it really counts on you guys to extend further and create your own uh, user flows, for example. <coughs> So before we dive into the platform, let's see uh, a Joomla website with video. So this is what we want to create, for example. Um, we're looking on a Joomla website. Excuse me if I sit. <laughs> we're looking on a standard Joomla website with a feature that provides you with a playlist, and that playlist have actual videos, and that those are actual videos from, uh, from the event. You can actually see Brian uh, Timman speaks about his experience with Jane Beyond, and hopefully the internet will not let us down, which it seems to do. Let's try and refresh the page. Because currently, I'm using um, a hosted version of Kultura. So it's not really local host on my web, on my uh, machine. Um, using the services of, of Kultura.com cloud. Um, the beauty of the platform is that it provides you with um, three different editions. And the first one is completely open source, like Joomla. And you know what, the, the, very, beautiful, the very beauty of that platform is, those, is that those three editions are actually completely uh, seamless, completely feature-wise the same. Um, so you have the, the, the platform which is open source and you can download it and set it up on your servers. And then most of the client don't really want to be handling the IT services, the, the setting up of the servers, the working with the CDNs. So those, this is where those clients can go to cultura.com, sign up, and have their own services, have everything basically managed on cultura.com. And you own the content, unlike YouTube, for example. Um, you decide what happens with it, when and why. And, well, basically, you don't really need to worry about anything from IT services, backup services, uh, CDN integrations, and so on. Um, and the third one is enterprise, which is open source, but with more support. That's the difference. Um, so what do you say? Will it work now? Yeah. We'll leave it there. <laughs> okay, so very basic website, right? We have a playlist and we have content in the end playlist and then we'll leave it here. Now, what happens if our user, we want to be able, we want to provide the users uh, of Jane Beyond to be able to uh, go on the website and add their videos. So you don't want the users to be able to go into the admin panel, for example, and, and have access that enables them to add embed codes. But you do want them to be able to submit an article and just say add video. And if the network will allow, we will be fine. 
So we talked about uh, all the steps, right? So we're starting from the first, very beginning. The, the, the first step was let's enable the users to upload content to the website or to import it, for example. So um, we'll just, here the screen ac actually asks us if you want to create, uh, uh, if you want to upload a single video or you want to create a mix. And the mix is actually a mashup of multiple videos. What will happen is that when I'll finish uploading the first video, the, and, and a full editor, a video editor, will be uh, on the screen. And then enabling the user to add more videos and then edit that video into, and edit those videos into a single mashup using transitions and soundtracks and everything else. Um, so for the simplicity of things, we'll just, Everything comes with a community edition. The co yeah, as I said at the first, uh, there is no feature differences between the editions. There's basically support and license differences, and the hosted edition provides everything that you won't need your own IT services. Um, Yes. So as it, as things happen, you can mention what is So okay, so let's let's complete that flow and we'll get to analytics as well. Um You want to be able to charge the users for it. Yeah. Yes, so um, using the APIs, you will be able to know how my, you know, what was the size of the video that was uploaded, for example, and then link that to the user on your Joomla site, and by that charge them. That's no, as I said, the Joomla extension now provides you with a very basic uh, integration to start to get started with, but the APIs are all there, and that's a client library based on PHP, so. You don't really need to call HTTP services on your own. You just need to use native functions within the extension in order to extend its functionality. Um, so we'll try. Yeah. Kultura is basically a, 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 a standalone platform. It doesn't need any service, but in order to provide you, remember we talked about uh, integration. So your users don't want to be uh, pushed between one console to another console. So that's why you're using an extension. Um. So you're setting up a custom size for, for the user to upload or as a maximum? Mm-hmm. So you can define your own set of flavors that the the uploaded videos, the uploaded media will be converted to. So for example, and always your your raw media will be always safe. So you get the raw media that the user uploaded, and then you also get a set of flavors that were defined. For example, uh, high resolution for uh, flash playback, low resolution for flash playback, iPhone, iPad resolution, um, you know, VP8, whatever. And this is actually uh, extendable, so you can create your own set of um, transcoding flavors. Um, for example, if you need your content to be streamed to a TV network, then, t then TV broadcasters usually have their own set of demands for how the video is uh, transcoded. So you will be able to do that. And that's, that's pretty amazing because the network has allowed us to upload a file. Um, so uh, what happens is that the user can add a title to the video. And add tags and all, and then what happens in the what happens behind now 
is the second step that we've talked about. So we, we, uh, we ingested the content, we uploaded it, and now the system will be converting it, will digest the content in order to make it available for viewing on the web and viewing on the iPhone, for example. Um, so here you can say that the extension is telling me media is currently being converted, please try again in a few minutes because you just upload an AVI file and an AVI file is not viewable on the web. So you will be, you'll need to wait. You can select the player that you want to use and we'll see in a minute how you can define your own players. So currently it can it sends the notifications to the Joomla extension saying when when the conversion was and over the Joomla will receive a notification on the server side that a specific video is finished conversion now and is ready to be played back now uh you on the Joomla side can catch this uh notification and process it for example to send emails to the users Yes, you can do whatever you want. And I'm currently using an admin view, so I actually see the. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Where's my new article? So that's a video I just pictured and uploaded. Um, so this is basically how the users will be able to upload the media into your site, you know, without really the need to get inside the admin console. I actually got inside the, the admin console because I needed to uh, place the video on my homepage, but you can set it up as a default behavior. Um, so. How do you get started with it? Um, currently, there's a, a Joomla extension in an alpha version. Um, it, the uh, uh, first version will be released in a few days. And you can actually uh, follow the development on cultura.org. Um, under projects, you will find the Joomla extension. And there, you can see the progress on the repository, for example, and what's going on with it. Um, Basically, it's a set of four extensions, four plugins. Uh, you just download the plugin, add it to your Joomla site, and continue from there. Um, the, as I said before, the very basic behaviors are already implemented. For example, uploading of videos, creating a mix together. For example, let's, let's create a mix and you add your article.
So when the user chooses to create a, mi a remix, for example, this is what you get. You get a, a simple video editor that provides you with a clip library of the, the user's video, the, the videos that were uploaded by the user, and the user can actually add, go ahead and add more again. Um, and uh, of course you can cut the video and trim it or add more videos, control the transitions between the videos, um, modify soundtrack for example, and then This is what you get. Everything. Yeah, same as videos, same as images. You can upload everything of every type or every codec and the platform will handle that for you. Um, the open source version uses FFmpeg and Ampler with a robust set of, of codecs available. Um, due to licensing, the open source version does not include onto, but you can go ahead and buy a purchase a license from Google for the onto encoder and uh, work with it on your own. Uh, yep. If you, at that point, if you wanted to also submit it, as well as being on your website, you want to also submit it to YouTube simply to exploit that platform as a social media. Yes. So, um, let's go a bit further. Okay, so when you finish upload your, uploading your, uh, your videos, and let's say you're the admin of the website and you want to create more advanced stuff, so you get inside your uh, cultural management console, and again, this is all done by API, so if you really want it, for example, for your client, then you can uh, call those APIs from the Joomla extension and then just create the UI on your own. That way the user will never be able, um, required to get into the cultural management console. Now, um, so you have your content and then you have a syndication panel. And on that syndication panel, you can create feeds. And those feeds are necessarily MRSS feeds that you can take and submit to other providers. For example, um, working with Google Video to, uh, what this view will do, will do is create an MRSS feed that you can use and then submit to Google. And whenever the, uh, the videos under the, the category that you chose will be uploaded again, well, um, you'll have an, a new video, for example, on that feed or a video has been changed then Google will be notified through that MRSS. Now, uh, for example, we have uh, four uh, default providers here. So you have Google, Yahoo, and the two more interesting ones are iTunes and TubeMogul. So iTunes is interesting because you can, this is a way you can actually sell your content. You can create a feed that will always be pushed to iTunes automatically and that way enable you to push your content automatically to iTunes and monetize it. And TubeMogul is a very interesting service that provides you with a way that to upload your videos automatically to Vimeo, YouTube and other social network sites automatically whenever the MRSS has been um, updated. Now, Any to Shoutcast, Icecast, Icecast, Shoutcast, no, but using the APIs, I'm, I'm guessing it's not too complicated to do. That's uh, like a streaming, right? Yeah, radio. Yeah, so using the APIs, it's not very complicated to do. And what you can do actually is um, Set a new profile to convert your videos into shout, in, into format that Shoutcast will. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Video, audio. The beauty of that system, actually, you can actually use it to manage documents also. 
uh, PDF files, Swift files. Everything under Rich Media can actually be managed under that. Can I upload a video and just, and then, uh, just audio? Yeah, you can rip. You can rip off the audio, of course. Yes, you can. Let's say, for example, you uh, you add a video and you create a new profile, a transcoding profile, that uh, transcode your video into an MP3. So necessarily, that means the encoder will rip off the video files. Um, so, for example, from the KMC, it's really easy to see uh, the whole steps. Like you have upload. And then you can manage the content and moderate it. Um, so if you choose, for example, that your content should be moderate, then um, on the moderation panel, you'll see all the videos that were uploaded and yet been approved. And then you need to go on the moderation panel and choose specific files to approve, and then it will be available on the Joomla site. Um, interesting thing is a uh, playlist. You can define playlist on a set of rules or just static playlists. For, for example, YouTube channels are static because you create a channel and then you add videos to it and by that, that's over. Now you can also create rules-based playlists. So for example, you want to say that your uh, playlist will be all the videos that were tagged by Jane Beyond or all the videos under the category Jane Beyond or for example, a more advanced playlist that all the videos that were uploaded between uh, X date and Y date. So you'll have uh, a playlist of videos that were uploaded on a, on a section of time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so jumping a bit ahead, but we also have uh, uh, the studio, which enables you to create your own uh, players or playlist players. Um, those players are actually, uh, those are actually flash players, but you can also um, uh, use a, an HTML5 library that we have and create your own video players. The library is based on jQuery and jQuery UI. So um, the, the UI of the library, the UI used over the player is actually uh, easily modified. And you can use, for example, theme roller to theme the, the player. Um, so yeah. No, it just, the cultural logo by default is on the player, on the control bar, as you saw there. Uh, where was it? Yeah, over here. Well, you see that? Yeah. This is what he's referring to. Now, um, yeah, totally, you can go and remove it. Now. And basically, if you self if you self host this the system, if you download the server and install it on your own, then the code is there and you can do whatever you want with it. Um, going back to your question, so the application studio provides you with a way to create your own players, and by that this means, um, for example, adding plugins to the player and um, modifying the playback sequence or um, how it looks and adding features or removing features or, or changing the way uh, uh, the colors, for example, of the, of the buttons. Now, this is a very simple WYSIWYG application to enable you to do it, but uh, this player actually reads a KML file, which is an XML file that we defined it's very similar to MXML. If, you're, if you've developed Flex, for example, you'd know uh, how to use it. Um, so it's a UI language based on, MX, on XML. It's very easy to adapt. What, 
necessarily it's like a, a, you have tags that define sections in the player and then um, how those sections will look like and then relate to other assets um, for how the, uh, for the uh, design of things, for example. Um, so you asked about advertising. So there are, sorry, and this is actually uh, going to be replaced with a more advanced system soon. But um, for now you have out of the box integration with Adaptive and Tremor, but you can also uh, create your own plugin. And I can show you later if you want how to create plugins for the player. And use the text as the video progress. And this is an application that they wrote, but they also provide a full service for the uh, transcription of the video. So uh, it's, uh, I think, 97 or 95 percent accurate. And they also have human provisioning on top of that to make sure that everything works fine. Um, <laughs> it's all written in JavaScript except for the player. And uh, using the APIs from the player, they actually were able to easily integrate. They actually created um, very extremely talented developers, but they created this UI in a few hours. So that's as simple as that to integrate with those services. Um, <coughs> That's, by the way, that's a video of, uh, of the Open Video Conference. Uh, that's a large conference that we're leading with uh, Open Video Alliance. Uh, that's a, a, a group of companies and individuals that have gathered together in order to promote open video and usage of open source tools for video on the web. Um, and that video actually uh, was taken on the Open Video Conference and I think the next open video conference will be uh, around October in New York, but uh, I'm not sure, so check it out, openvideoconference.com or openvideoalliance.com or .org. Okay, um, so, where is it? That's an example of how to make money out of the cultural exchange. They got it up there, they created their account, and then um, in order to buy that service, you, can, you need to contact them. And you contact them through the support form to the, uh, let me show you, when you get inside the application. So you have the whole um, details of the application as well as how to get in touch with them and how to buy the service. Um, and so everybody can go up there if you have an idea for even the simplest um, player design. If you want to be able to sell your design for the player, you think they're uh, really cool and worth sharing, then go ahead, upload it there. It's very easy to use um, and hopefully make money out of it. Mm. So that's the exchange. Let's look of a simple example of how, uh, how the APIs is actually used. And it's very simple. Um, that's an example of how to use the thumbnail API um, the thumbnail API provides you with a way that whenever you upload your video, the system automatically, automatically create a thumbnail for you. But uh, what well, usual problem is that, for example, the first few seconds of the video are black. So what do you do with that? So basically you, s you can, uh, when you contribute the videos, you can define that uh, all, of the, all of the videos that are uploaded will be actually uh, the thumbnail will be taken from the second five, for example. But that's not enough. You want to be able to control it on your own, and you want to be able to do f more advanced things with that. So <coughs> the Cultura Thumbnail Guide will show you with all the available features of that API. So for example, you can say, um, of course, what video is that the thumbnail will be taken from. 
uh, what version of the video will be, uh, it will be taken from. The height and the weight of the thumbnail that will generate. Um, the type of the cropping. So uh, let's say you want to crop your, uh, okay, let's say you want to crop your video file, your, your thumbnail. Is it five or, okay. I just made sure that I actually understand you. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you have, uh, um, you want to crop your video file, you, you want to crop your thumbnail and uh, what will happen on the background? Will it be white? Will it be black? Uh, will it be uh, maintaining aspect ratios, for example? So everything is being done here. And you can also say, of course, um, if you look at it here, that video slice, that's what it means. Now, uh, video slice say, hey, take the video from that. Uh, second of the video. Take the thumbnail from that second of the video. And this, this is really interesting because you can use it for, for example, uh, to do lots of crazy things. Now, one use case that you may know of, and because of the network, we couldn't really integrate it into Joomla, but it's fairly easy and I can show it to you later. Um, so, one use case is that you want to be able to simply provide a live thumbnail. So when the user hovers over the thumbnail, it will actually change the, the picture that is shown. And the pictures will be taken live on, you know, real time from the, from the video. And we can see an example here. It's, that's continuous, but you can actually say, what? Those are slices, yeah, but as I said, you define the slices and the time that is being uh, created, so you can actually do whatever you want. You can say, um, you know, divide the video into uh, 10,000 slices and then show me a slice every uh, half a second. That will probably make it almost continuous. Um, but wh what I really wanted to show you is the easiest of it, the, how easy it is to work with it. So for example, this is an example of how to do that with a simple JavaScript, a few lines of JavaScript, and uh, just define your image on the player. So this is the, uh, the code of the image, and it says, uh, here, this is, the, uh, this is the source of the image, and the source of the image is the actual uh, URL to the thumbnail API, and then the ID of the video that we wanna use, and the weight of the video that uh, we want it to be, and the height, and then, we say on mouse over, uh, on mouse over, and on mouse out. Call the uh, the thumbnail rotator, which is a JavaScript class that we'll see in a moment, and that's <coughs> that's all there is to it. And then the thumbnail rotator, this is all there is. It's a really like 20 or 30 lines of code, and that provides you with a way to um, cut the URL and say change the vid slice that is being shown right now on the object that I was given. And the object that I was given is the actual image. <coughs> and what we do is replace the SRC of the image with the next slide. So that's it. Um, you can find a lot more information about the APIs on culture.org. Sorry, on culture.org. Um, you get everything from uh, creation of RSS feeds into uh, working with the client libraries or even creating a generator for a library of your own if you're working with, a, uh, for example, a, a, a programming language that no one have heard of, then you can create a, a library of your own. And it's fairly easy, it's like, it's actually like following the WSDL format, just changing on your own, very easy. Um, just go out there, check it out, learn more. Um, do come over and take my info and, and ask questions or, um, you know, have your ideas sent to me. We really love it and this is why I'm here mostly, is to learn and to listen to your ideas and to make it better. Um, and even more so, if you want to get involved in the project, um, we're here for you. That's it. Thank you. You have a uh, question? Something?
crazy dot com. It's a P R E Z I. Cheers, sir. You okay. ready? Yeah. We're gonna go John Jams. What? He Jacks Judge or something. I don't know what. Oh, he really? Knows. I don't think he knows what. Oh, yeah. I can't really see that. Yeah, really. Where, where is it? I, I'm not sure. Is it? He's on, he's on the panel. They asked him to judge something. Is it downstairs? Yeah, but, but there's no rush. I think it's happening a little bit. Oh, he's trying to avoid it. Okay, maybe there. Do you have any questions or something you'd like to say, guys? Thanks, man. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're amazing. Actually, it's good. I'm, I'm traveling a lot and... This is uh, like my thousand community event that I've been to. And I'm also, uh, I'm also organizing community events here uh, in Israel as well. I'm coming from Israel. And... Uh, this is really a great community. I mean, that's a really small number of people for, you know, such a large event. But you're all so great. I mean, I had so much fun and I'm here only for two days. Um, so, ideas, questions? Okay. So, uh, I can tell you that um, Control.com actually runs on are you keep on rolling? Am I just holding it for fun, or can I can I lose the one? <laughs> no, you're you're keeping on rolling. Okay. You said people will be downloading this. Yeah. So, server. Uh, I can tell you that Control.com runs on three data centers in the U.S. and uh, it's serving today for almost seventy thousand publishers and. Some of them are really large, some of them are really small bloggers. Um, but that doesn't tell me how much I can run on my one client. How much? No, that, that's what I'm saying. It, it really depends on, you know, what are your needs. You know, how many concurrent conversions you may have, for example. Um, what will be the, the load on your Apache server? Um, are you planning to have a lot of analytics, for example? Culture.com provides uh, same as Google Analytics, once a day, once a day accuracy. So every 24 hours we aggregate everything and calculate it for you. Um, but let's say you want to need something, you're going to need something that will run every, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes, then you're probably going to need a no, strong I'm just, uh, just running the whole th thing by myself, not going through culture. No, that's what I'm saying. So, okay. so if you want to be setting the whole stuff on your own server, you're going to be, <coughs> sorry, you, you need to ask yourself the questions of how many concurrent transcoding I may have, how many users this Apache will handle, um, you know, how many requests should it So there are guidelines on the site for that? Uh, no, that, that's a good question though. We'll, we'll look into it. But really, it's a, it's a case by case kind of thing because it really depends on the amount of people that are going to use our. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Just like, I mean, we, we fill up at least uh, two terabytes every three months of video. So that's just the raw video. That's without conversion. So where do you work? Um, well, this is this is this is for a nonprofit in India. Just lectures. Two terabyte of, of video every month? Oh yeah, easy. Yeah. You're running two cameras. So you're, and they're both they're all high I mean, We can produce Blu-ray. Why do you need Blu-ray for the Russian? I don't, I'm just saying the, the video is like that quality or something. Nice. Yeah. So if we have to upload the, the raw video, that's maybe way too much. So that's very interesting. I, I work with a, a, a company that had um, had a whole um, processing of the video. They they were uh, processing the video to extract um, items in the future, for example, for better searching. Now uh, the processing was made in Russia, while the actual company in the servers were in Israel. And they wanted to be able to separate the, the process and say, okay, once a day I'm sending a bulk of videos to Russia, where in Russia they had a really bad connection. 
So they said, uh, I'm going to be doing it once a day, once a day. And then once a day, the data center in Russia will give back the, the files, the, the, the processed files. And um, so yeah, you, you can distribute the, the work. So for example, on your case, you can say, I want to run a, a, a control machine within the university, even without uploading the files, it just pulls from a local disk. And process those videos yeah, and then yeah. upload it. Right. The, the other thing is looking at corporate lands and also thinking for that. So. Excuse me? Corporate land. A land. I would not be with them in the internet. It would be internet. Even better. Yeah. And then you can stream with higher quality. Yeah. yeah. You have less problems on, you know, <laughs> on, the, on the streaming side. But again, if you've got to be uh, processing the videos, then that's a whole other uh, story. And you will need to uh, identify, for example, how many people are going to be uploading videos and uh, do I have dead hours? So <coughs> like, um, you can say the whole process should be done only at night. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I just want to, yeah, I, I just want to know what the server is going to do. So the server is doing a lot of things from converting on the file streaming them managing the users um, for you, for example. So there are a lot of things, but really the, the, uh, the thing that requires the most resources are by far the transcoding server. That's why usually for um, large, <coughs> sorry, for large scale solutions, we, uh, we recommend that you use a distributed server yeah. solution and that the transcoding server will be a massive, like, eight CPUs machine and will be really dedicated only for that. But again, it depends on the amount of users and the amount of processing and the amount of data hours that you will have. How fast you have to get it done? If, you, if you've got a month to get it done, you don't need to be really fast. So. Uh -huh. You just have to know how fast you need to get it done first. That's why I asked you. How many files do you have that you need to get done in a, in a month? Oh. Uh, when we're running a conference, a 10 day conference, we'll be putting up 8 hours a video a day. But you see, that's different. Then there'll be nothing going on for 3 months. And then, then you're not in a problem. Mm -hmm. then, then you're right. It's, it's, it's just different. different. So, yeah, it's not a problem. Any other questions? Ideas? Where are you from? What, do you, what, what business do you have? Yeah, I'm from Switzerland. And um, I'm teaching. For a job on basis, and I have a lot of clients interested in the video. It's just the small things, I mean, but maybe it's really interesting to, to work with Fortura because we often uh, run into trouble with uh, formats. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of my clients they just upload their videos to YouTube, we have it. I mean, that's, that's okay, it's pretty easy. But uh, I mean, with uh, YouTube, we, we run into problems with some specific formats, so it's not all allowed. And I'm very happy to see that we really yeah, and everything's open to everything. To yeah. the, uh, and there are basically, the, it's, it's good that you mentioned from an education vertical because we have a lot of solutions dedicated to education. We really not only believe in it, you know, in providing better solutions for video and education because we want to be there, but <coughs> sorry. Um, Almost 10 out of 10 of the largest universities in the United States are using Cultura today, like Harvard and, and UPenn, Penn State, and whatever. Um, um, so you can go on Cultura.com, there's a whole section dedicated for education, and we also have uh, uh, extensions, as I said, for uh, LMSs like Blackboard, Sakai, and Moodle, and a lot of solutions that are really dedicated to, to education vertical. Um, from moderation point of view, uh, submitting of uh, um, uh, works by students, um, you know, things that are really for e learning stuff. I, I can submit my own work from home on video. Yes, sorry. I, I, I just asked if you have any clients for hospitals, packages for hospitals. Packages for hospitals. Uh, yeah, where, where the new doctors uh, can learn the new uh, methods for the chip arts. I don't know what's the name in English for that. 
So basically, it seems like a training package, right? Yeah. You need you need to train your uh, your uh, doctors on whatever yes. topic. Mm -hmm. um, you can use whatever CMS, yeah. unless you have a specific requirement for something. Yeah. Is it as a kit transcription module. So that transcription is actually made by uh, three different companies today. Uh, as I said, we try to focus on the infrastructure. And uh, there's a lot of companies that provide additional services, like transcription services. And we'll be happy to connect your services with them as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so you say, you can have
thing, because I worked a lot in India, that's so bad getting downloads from almost any site I needed. So I connect to my server in the US, get all my downloads to there, and then I get everything, because I can manage that connection, and it's very, very re reliable, and it, I can restart stuff, and, you know, uh, instead of these other, a lot of the other places I get stuff from, I mean, if, if you lose the connection, it's gone. And then you start over, so 40 megabytes, okay, start over. You, know, you just do it all day. Set up an MVP site and just push the files to the end and use the CSP. It, it really is easy. So, I mean, it's uh, the, your point. The, the big point is the user, getting users able to do something, but there's really good free programs that look just like Explorer, just drag and drop, flip, flip, flip. And, yeah. and an important aspect of that also is that. For example, let's say you have a large repository of files, but you're not really sure that you're going to be needing all of it. Um, so you really want your users to decide what content they really want. Um, so we, we've looked at the contribution wizard before, the uh, large box within the Joomla site that enables you to upload the files. Now, you can define, if you, if you looked at it, Bucket before 
or for example saying, um, okay, yeah, the conversion is done, that's finished, now I want you to push it. Yeah, I want to there, but I want to play it from there. Because see, they go all over the world, you can, you can define what areas you want to. Right, you, you want to play from the cloud front, and cloud front is actually pulling the files from the S3 buckets. Right, so you're going to need to push those files that you have into the S3 bucket. So you create a plugin for the server that says, or, or you can actually do that from a third party application. You don't really need to integrate inside the server. You can listen by notifications. Um, and whenever the, the file has finished conversion, just take that file and upload it to the bucket. Yeah. And it will be immediately available. It's just perfect. It's not out of the box. We try to figure out what are the most demand and project.